So, this is courtesy of Yanis Papas and Paul Verzi. It's called from the We Might, we Might Be Drunk um, podcast. And it features these comedians, Yanis Papas, Paul Verzi, Sam Marill, Mark Normand, essentially talking about cancel culture and talking about Shane Gillis, you know, standard comic, standard, like, you know, comedic podcast, you know, topics. Right? They've got about five or ten they run through. And one of them that they all love is fucking council culture so they're talking about council culture and guess whose names pops up yeah that's it pedo man himself crystalia and they're talking about him and essentially they're saying oh this guy's still selling loads of tickets even though he's been accused of all this stuff and he's got this crazy documentaries out about him he's still loads, still selling loads of tickets and you can see the the kind of amazement and wonder and almost glee in their eyes when they hear that he's been selling tickets and selling out venues and theaters and stuff it's pretty startling to see to be honest but anyway let's play the clip itself this is it episode number 133 i'm gonna let it play a bit so you can get some context around what they're saying and then you'll hear them mention crystal and then i'll give my side of the story on the other end at least yeah that yeah, should be that should be a sentence like you got up and the judge should be like you can't you ever can't be rude to a waitress <laughs> a waiter <laughs> <laughs> well, Gillis admittedly said he's like after I got, I got nicer, I got way nicer after yeah. I got canceled. Yeah, <laughs> so that's kind of nice. He got also a lot more famous as well, <laughs> so that helped. But you know what? Shane got famous because he he didn't get bitter. I mean, that was yeah. one of the beautiful things about Shane. I think is that like yes. he could have that could have happened to him, and he could have become a huge dick. But I think what happened was he was like, I'm just gonna go all in on on my stuff. Yep, and, and being I, funny and yeah. being funny, and he was he was like nice in his comedy. I thought I think got, like, there was like he a, got humble, like in like in a way. Yeah, I talked to him about it, and he's I was like, dude, look what you did. You out there doing your thing now? And you're not. He goes, oh, thanks, man. He, it was about being silly and funny, and, and he didn't and get crazy. There was no. no there was no malice and bitterness. Because you think get guys that go far the other way yeah, and all exactly. of a sudden they're fucking doing podcasts I remember I woods. talked to him after it happened I said I really hope you don't ever go that way and he goes I won I said good yeah, he's too yeah. smart yeah but yeah, I he's I, funny he's talented so funny guy yeah. some guys some some guys you know they just go oh fuck you you did this to me well now I'm gonna go in the woods and do a podcast by a fucking bonfire yeah. and you know and yeah. they start and they go re- they put their chips in the other way real <laughs> I love how they're all afraid to mention sorry I interrupted there you see how they're all afraid to mention Owen Benjamin's name <laughs> If there's two names, comedian, stand-up comedians on podcasts, or how do you call them? Comedy podcasts, whatever. Comedians hate to mention. Mike Redbar and Owen Benjamin. They're super afraid of saying those two names. They don't want to say them because they know if they mention those two guys' names, they're going to be talking about them for fucking years. They're going to rip them apart. They're going to push. They're not going to even push the line. They're going to fucking throw the line out of the window, right? They're going to go fucking crazy. So they're super scared, super worried to mention Owen Benjamin and Red Bar's name. It's fucking hilarious. Real big. Yeah. Right. I got bad news for you. There's already a podcast called The Bonfire. So you're in big <laughs> trouble. Uh, but, but here's the thing. You can't ignore the fact that those things do backfire and make people more famous. What, it, canceling? Yeah, I mean, it does put your name. It depends on the If you're scenario. huge, it takes you down. But if you're a little if unknown. It's, yeah, but I think your actions you after. It's, I think your actions after are a big part it's over of it. A, yes. If it's over a joke, it, it could possibly inflate, you know, your ticket sales. But if it's over something behavioral, you, you're finished. It's kind of finished. I mean, I uh, Galea's got like two sold out shows at the Beacon. Who? Does he? Yes. Who After does? the last, who does? Delia. Some- Delia. I mean, he's, oh, really? he's still doing a solo. Wait, did theater. something? Whoa! Yeah. Really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Jeez. I mean, his fans don't care. Now, listen, and it sounds like he, he sold out did four that. shows at a middle school too, which yeah, I thought was really, a little weird. But he's what you call Black Friday shopper. He shows up a little too early to the store. <laughs> 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 You're like, hey, guy, it's not open yet. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Whoa. So, but you know, it's just still people. Well, the Bud Light lady, whatever, Dylan. So. For me, I got the impression that they were just impressed that he's selling tickets still. That's the weird thing about this whole shebang. And if anything, this is probably the biggest indication that you need or biggest sort of like example to show you that for the most part, comedians in general don't really have a moral compass. There is no such thing as like principles, ethics, morals, um, what's right and wrong like there is nothing of that it just is about ticket sales like they get to the point of where like you know if if it meant choosing between going on a gig that paid them a grand and going to see their mom that's on a you know on their deathbed they'd pick the grand over the mom any said any day of the week 
that's essentially how cutthroat they all kind of are. And it kind of makes sense though, because if you hear them all talk about them to each other, they're all kind of really catty and stab each other behind the back and stuff and talk behind each other's backs and whatnot. So it makes sense why they like that, because clearly from how they speak, selling tickets is pretty difficult. So when someone does sell tickets, regardless of the circumstances around it, it really impresses them because they know how hard it is to sell one ticket to some, you know, to a fan to come, you know, let sell tickets one thing, maybe having them come is another thing. All those things really are important. So for them, it's really impressive when people do sell tickets and it kind of blows their mind. But in this case, in particular, with the Chris Alea thing, I don't think it's worth it at all to like, you know, hey, you got this notoriety from being known now essentially as an alleged diddler. You got these allegations on against you that essentially paint you out to be a pedo. Maybe not technically a pedo, but close enough that it would make the regular person really uncomfortable. I've kind of said this before on the pod, but a normal guy, if like you approach somebody in a aspect of maybe trying to hook up, maybe trying to get into a relationship, or even trying to get a move on somebody, right? And it doesn't go well, a regular dude will feel horrified by it. Like if you go in, go in for the kiss and that person pulls away, you got to touch them and they kind of shiver and stuff. It'd make you feel awful. Just that kind of, um, what's that thing called? That kind of, you know, subtle kind of rejection. It kind of makes you feel awful to the pit of your stomach. So I can't imagine what it must be like to be a guy and have all these people in the world, have all these documentaries out, have all these allegations about you, essentially causing all this pain and strife to all these young girls to the point where they're all fucking calling you you know, a manipulator, an abuser, a narcissist, a sociopath, a diddler, a pedo, like that kind of thing for the regular person would crush you. Or if anything, if you really think it wasn't true, you would essentially try your best to clear your name. That's what you do. One of the two things, either crush you and make you feel so guilty that it would be hard to really kind of enjoy life because you're hung up on the idea that everyone thinks you're a monster. Or if it wasn't true, you would fight tooth and nail to clear your name. Because your name is all you have. You're kind of really, you want, to, you, want, you want to be able to walk down the street with your head held up high. For some reason, these guys don't have that ability to kind of think that way. They think all attention is good attention. So for Chris Alia to be accused of what he's got accused of, have all these documentaries out there about him, have all these allegations out there about him, have all these people in the industry say they always knew but didn't say anything, all these kind of crazy shits, right? It's, it's just good that he's got attention and he's got a committed fan base that wants to kind of see him perform and do his thing that's kind of where their mind goes to it like oh we should live in a society where you know that is okay thing to do like you should be okay. like not even a society as a person you should be okay too because i think you know maybe society shouldn't get involved in it because my whole idea my kind of idea or pure view when it comes to flipping council culture is that i don't like institutionalized council culture i don't like when corporations and networks and whatnot come in and try and stop your career i think that's awful but i think if individuals decide they don't want to fuck with you that's their decision but i don't like it when the systems all kind of you know um agree with each other that you are out like they decide okay you you don't deserve a platform anymore that's really fucking crazy i don't think that's cool in any way shape or form so if chris lee's fans don't mind seeing him i don't really blame the fans the fans want to see what they want to see they want to forget what they want to forget about the allegations just concentrate on his comedy cool but i still think if you're a stand-up comedian you shouldn't look at chris lee with any sort of level of admiration really or because you know he's still able to sell tickets apart from his allegations what do you want would you would you want your career to be completely halted for a year because all of these girls that are questionably underage questionably of age or underage have come out and said yeah, you're a monster and you treat them horribly when you met them would you actually like that would you actually like your career to be put on pause for two years while everybody accuses you of being you know a fucking monster behind the scenes and shit is that really worth it so you can sell out tickets at the fucking beacon but essentially that's what they're saying yeah it is <laughs> these communities are saying tickets are way more important then your morality then your principles and then how you actually feel about yourself how your family sees you because that's another thing people don't talk about often like how your friends and family sees you i think chris even mentioned it one of the pods that people say stuff to him in the street chris said this before chris said before that people say stuff to him in the street they they say stuff like i'm sure he goes into some shorts girls give him a dirty look so like imagine what that life is like but you sell tickets though so that's okay that makes it completely okay having that inner hell that you're going through day to day, knowing this pain that you've caused people and shit, that's completely okay. But 
when you go out and fucking you know in the big wide world and everyone's looking at you like you're some pariah and also let's let's just put this other thing these guys are all sitting here wanking over the fact that oh no coming in their heads at the thought of selling out the beacon and thinking oh chris did it and he's still cancelled right but all these comedians what's the one thing they talk about that they kind of love what's the one thing they, they talk about they love they love the hang what they're doing right here they love the hang they love being in a green room they love being in a car park so these comedy clubs and chewing the shit chris Alia can't do that because all these guys as much as they talk about cancel culture and being against cancel culture if you actually was against cancel culture and was anti it you would invite chris onto your podcast you would have him on then and, and shoot the shit but they want to keep their sponsors they want to keep their their channels monetized all this stuff they want to keep but then they'll talk a big game about being anti this anti that no you're not really no you are not really because if you were you would kind of show it with your fucking actions um lou darva says watching no i'm um, not at the moment bro i'm just gonna run through the random shirt now i'm not really too um lou yeah i'm not really too what's that thing called clued up on the boxing side of things so you won't get a very entertaining show from me i'm afraid i know I, I know what to look at when i'm watching but i'm not going to provide anything interesting in terms of a stream so if you want better coverage of that i probably recommend watching somebody else that's able to give you a much better show you know i actually could recommend you to go watch lou go and watch the thick boy fight companion right the calabasas fight companion go watch that <laughs> if you want to see great coverage of boxing go watch it <laughs> Go to the Thick Boy Fight Companion and you'll see great coverage of that live stream. Um, anyway. <laughs> you see them break it down really well on there. Anyway, um, all that to say, they're, they're amazed by his fucking ability to sell tickets, but they would never want to be seen on, seen on camera with him. Not even in private, right? They're not inviting him on his shows. They're not going on his pod. They're not inviting him on their pod. So really, this is all just waff. They just like the money and like the aspects of selling out venues. That's basically it. But again, if you needed any sorry, any example as to why you should only listen to comedy podcasts for the shits and giggles and because you like the comedians, cool. But don't ever listen to these guys for life lessons. Please, for the love of God. Like, these guys are... Their, their fucking moral compass is just completely... I don't know. It's not. It doesn't exist, really. To be honest, it doesn't exist because some of these guys have daughters and shit. You're like, hold on, like, don't you guys have a line? Like, don't you guys have like a a thing that you just can't stand? Like one thing. I don't know. Maybe it's like cheats. Maybe it's scammers. Maybe it's crooks. Maybe it's thieves. Maybe it's pedos, rapists. There must be something that someone does. You like, you know what? I'm done. But these guys, there's nothing. There's literally nothing another person can do in their field that would ever make them say you know what nah that was fuck like they just do you know what I mean like they just live in a weird parallel universe where as long as they sell tickets it's all that matters they're good guys that sell tickets yeah he's selling tickets man killed a bunch of people but he's selling tickets <laughs> it's like what <laughs> oh, anyway what can you do what can you do